Hey what's going on guys and welcome back to another video tutorial of javascript especially the regular expressions part so in the previous couple of videos in fact in the previous last 3 videos we've been going through regular expressions in javascript and in the previous video of this playlist we saw mobile number validation so if you have missed that video do check it out because some of the things that we used there are going to be coming in in this video also basically we're just going to be continuing that same code and changing the regular expression over here to validate a proper email address and yes this tutorial is important because email and mobile number validations are pretty much used a lot in many cases in fact in projects also so the regular expression that we are going to be looking in today for emails is kind of important and it's not very straight forward so with that being said let's get started with today's topic okay so as you can see on the screen on the browser we have some output so we have a text box we have a button and we are going to be inputting some email and we are going to be validating this and then you have this entire black image so this is a image this is a simple image which i have just created to explain you how we are going to be doing the email validation and let me just show it to you so this is that image that i am just loading in in the html document so in the body tag we have a form we have a input type text box this is pretty much coming from the last video that we've done so i'm not retyping everything over here we have a label which is currently hidden over here it will be visible and it will turn red and it will display invalid when the email is invalid or the regular expression does not match and it will be green and valid when the regular expression matches right now it is hidden so it's not visible so if i click on this button right now it is showing valid because we still have to type in some regular expression so if i just type in a over here and hit submit it is invalid right so this is something that is going to happen so this is where we are actually going to be writing the complete regular expression for the email and then this is that image that is email.png which is coming from the folder which i just showed and i have given it a width of 380 pixels okay so this was the entire html code and on the on click of the button we are calling a validate function in the validate function this is that complete function we are taking the text from the text box using the get element by id and accessing that text box we are accessing the value that is whatever we are inputting in this text box we are storing it in this text variable and then we are creating a regular expression object and we are using the test method of this object and passing in the text that we just took in from the text box and if the regular expression matches we are showing valid we are making the visibility as visible of this label and we are changing the color to green and if it does not match then we are changing the text by using the inner html property to invalid we are changing the visibility as visible but we are changing the color as red okay so this is the entire code but this is something that we also did in the previous video so if you have watched that this is pretty basic to understand so the only thing that we are going to be changing over here is the actual regular expression okay so coming to this regular expression let's just take a look at this image so when you perform email validation it's not just one thing so email has a particular pattern so as you can see i have divided an email into four different parts so typically an email can be divided into four different parts or you can say patterns so the first part is where you enter your name so in the example you can see tanmay and i have added digits also so the first part can have any letters any numbers dots or hyphens okay so this is the part one then we have a add rate sign in between it is compulsory to have add rate in your email address right then the second part is the domain name for example simple snippets or telusco or google or gmail or anything then we have a dot which is again compulsory so this has to be there in your email address then we have the extension so the third part is the extension part wherein you have com or co.in or co.uk so depending upon what type of extension you can have a extra part okay so you have one extension that is dot com or dot in or dot net but sometimes it is also like dot co dot in right so it is divided in two parts so the fourth part is another extension which comes in with a dot but it is optional so typically this is how your email address can be divided into four different parts and these are the two different examples tanmay11 at simple simple dot co dot in so this dot in part can be optional sometimes it can be only dot com so it's not necessary right so that's why it is optional so the domain name can have any letters or hyphens right you cannot have dot in the domain name you cannot have add rate in the domain name but you can have numbers in the domain name you probably must have seen the domain name which is something like ways to sms right so you can see ways to sms.com so in the domain name you can see we have a number 2 so that is allowed over here we can also have something like a hyphen so we have simple snippets so simple hyphen snippets dot com something like that in the third part in the extensions part we only have letters right and we have small letters usually we are going to be validating for small letters only so we have .com .in 
tech dot net dot org and so on and so forth. And again for the fourth one also we have the same thing that is we have a dot and then we have any letter. Okay. So this is how we are going to be splitting the email into four different parts and validating each part. So now let's go to the coding part and let's form the entire regular expression. So right now in the regular expression I have just typed in the syntax of how the regular expression should be created and then I hope you know what is this caret and dollar sign. Basically whatever you want as an exact string should be entered in a caret and dollar sign. So the caret is the starting point of the string and dollar is the ending point of the string. So when something goes inside this, let's say I say A, B, C. So we are validating for exactly this string. So if there is anything extra other than ABC ahead of ABC or before ABC, then it's going to be invalid. So if I say ABC, it is valid. But if I add any character more, it is invalid. However, if I didn't have this dollar and caret sign, and if I typed in ABCD, it would have been valid. You can see over here. And that is because now it is only looking for ABC as a pattern in the entire string. It is not considering the entire string as the pattern. Okay, so I have an understanding. So that's why we need to have the caret sign and the dollar sign because we are going to be matching the entire string completely. Okay, so let's start with the first part that is the name part. According to our conditions, we can have any letters, we can have any numbers, we can have dot and we can also have hyphens. So what we're going to be doing is, as I mentioned, we're going to be splitting it into four different parts, right? So when you want to group or divide the entire regular expression into parts, you can use round brackets. So I can have four different round brackets for four parts over here. So in the first part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a character set, obviously, because we can have complete number sets, we can have complete letters, we can have dot and we can have hyphen, right? So here I'm going to start off with the character set. We've already seen what is character set, which comes in the square bracket. Inside that I'm going to say A to Z. We can also have capital letters over here. So I'm going to say capital A to capital Z, right? You can have a space in between, but I typically don't keep spaces. This is all fine. And the hyphen between A and Z tells that it is a range. And then we can also have 0 to 9, right? So this is our first part. So this is our first part out of the four different part of the email. So we are validating for the first part. Now apart from A to Z, A to Z and 0 to 9, we can also have a dot or a hyphen. So again, this is something also that we have to mention inside the character set only. So when I say dot, if I type in dot directly, it will not be taken in as a proper validation because when we use this just dot, it is actually treated as a special character which has a special meaning for validations. Let me just create another regex over here and I'll show you what this dot means. So the dot means a wildcard entry. Okay. So when I say a dot b, this means that I am looking for a string which starts from a, then the second character can be anything. So it can be a, a x b and it is going to be valid. It can be a one b, it is still going to be valid. It can be a at the rate b and it is still going to be valid. So this dot means that in this case, the middle character can be anything in the string. Okay. And it's going to be valid. So this dot has a special purpose. So we cannot directly use this dot in our actual regular expression like this. So in order to use this dot because we want dot in our name also, right? But we cannot directly use it because it is treated as a special character. So to not treat it as a special character, we have to use a backward slash. Okay. So till now in the character set, we have a to Z in the small caps. We have a to Z in the large caps. Then we have zero to nine and we defined a dot. And now lastly, we just need a hyphen. So I'm just going to give hyphen over here. So this is the entire character set for our first part. So let me just first cut out these brackets and let's see if this first part is validated. So I'm going to say Tanmay over here and let's see if it is valid. Okay. So one thing I missed out over here is we need to tell how many characters are also going to be there, right? Right now, when I define the character set, I'm defining only the first position over here. So this is something that I forgot to mention. So if I type in any one single character, it is always going to be valid, but we have not yet given how many times this character should be repeated, right? So this is just the first position. Now, technically this name that is the first part can be of any length because come on guys, we have sometimes very huge names. We have some weird usernames also sometimes in the email. So what we can do is instead of giving a fixed value, let's say I just want to give a fixed value of 20. So what if some guy's name is very large and it exceeds 20 characters, right? So in this case, what I can do is I can actually give a hard coded value. So I can say I want the string or the name to be 10 characters long, but then I only have to type in exactly 10 characters. Otherwise it will be invalid. 
so i can also give a range over here so i can see minimum 2 and maximum 10 and if it is in that range it will be valid so you can see it it is coming valid right now but this is very hard coded values right it, the username can exceed 10 characters sometimes if you have long names or if you have some weird usernames also right so instead of using this hard coded numbers another way to go about this is just add a plus okay so after you define the entire character set in the square brackets if you add a plus ahead of it it means that this character set pattern has to be applied to at least one or more than one characters in this entire string so now it means i can have any length of characters which have this pattern as the first part because it is in this round brackets so this is the first part right and it is still going to be valid so you can see if i add more things it is still going to be valid so this is our first part i hope you got how we did the first part we said we want a character set which has a range from a to z small caps a to z large caps 0 to 9 then we used a dot but we cannot directly use a dot so we used slash and dot and then we used a hyphen but this was just for the first position so we want a lot of characters and that character string can vary dynamically so we have different sized usernames for different cases so that's why we used a plus sign so that we can have dynamic number of characters as the first part okay so now let's move on to the second part so for the second part i'm again opening and closing round brackets but before that we have add the rate sign so in between the first two parts we have add the rate sign so i'm going to write add the rate over here so now if i say abc it's going to be invalid but if i say abc add the rate it's going to be valid so you can see so the first two parts are done that is your name and add the rate so now we have a domain now the domain can have any letters it can have numbers and or it can have hyphen so it is pretty much similar to the first part just that it cannot have a dot right otherwise everything the first part has second part also has except the dot sign so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to copy this entire character set and i'm going to paste it inside the second part and i'm just going to remove the dot with the backslash and again domain name characters can be of any length they are not very lengthy but let's keep this dynamic let's keep this plus and not give it a fixed length or not give it a proper range so let's test this again so i'm going to see abc at the rate simple so basically what we did is we did the first your name we did the add the rate sign and then the domain name so right now it is coming valid so we have tested it properly then we have a dot in between so before we start with the third part that is the extension part so this is for the extension part we have a dot in between so i'm going to write dot over here as it is so now let's do the extension part so in the extension part we have only a to z letters so even more simpler character set so i'm just going to copy this character set paste it over here and we are only going to have a to z but typically what happens is the extension is not having a large size you know we have dot com dot in dot net dot tech but it doesn't typically exceed more than 20 characters right so i'm going to give it a range of 2 comma 20 which means that these characters a to z should be repeated or should have at least two characters minimum and 20 characters maximum okay so let's test this out abc at the rate let's say telusco then we have a dot which we have validated for so i'm gonna say dot and then i'm gonna say com so there you go we have basically done the first three parts properly so if i have something like dot c it is gonna say invalid because we need at least two characters right so we can have dot co and it is gonna be valid because sometimes we have dot co dot in right so that's why we need at least two characters if we don't have this at the rate it is going to be invalid so everything is pretty much working fine as of now so this regular expression is actually a proper email validation regular expression except that extension part which is optional so if you know that your regular expression will not have co dot in or two dots or this extra extension part and you're just looking for a single dot com or dot in or dot net then you can use this regular expression as it is but since we have this extension part let's do that also so i'm going to add one more round brackets for the extension part and again the extension part is also going to have a dot and then it is going to have a character set so again square brackets character set and before the character set so we have to come outside the square brackets we have a dot over here right and again this is also going to be not ranging more than 20 characters so we have co dot in co dot uk co dot us so only two characters right so typically the extension is not very long so let's do this from 2 to 10 only okay so we've pretty much basically done the entire regular expression 
and this is that last part and i just made a little bit of changes i gave the range from 2 to 8 because 2 to 20 doesn't seem to be necessary and you can see in the output i have abc at the rate gmail dot co dot in and this is showing valid if i have abc at the rate gmail dot com if i submit this is also valid so if i didn't have this part that is the last part and if i tried to say abc at the rate gmail dot co dot in it would have given me an invalid sign so that's why we need the last part also and this is basically the entire email validation one last character that can be added into this regular expression is the question mark character so what this question mark does is for the last entire round brackets part that is the extension part it makes it optional so this question mark makes it optional so that whenever we enter a normal email also even that is also validated okay so the purpose of this question mark is to make the pattern which is immediately right next to it as optional and since this entire pattern is enclosed in this round brackets that is grouped together so this entire thing becomes optional okay so yeah this was email validation and before i wrap up let me tell you guys that this is not the only way to perform email validations if you just google email validation regular expressions you'll find many different ways in which regular expression can be applied for emails and that is because there is not one single way which does the email validations perfectly so even this might not work in 100% cases and there is a lot of debate as to which expression can be used to filter out 100% of legit emails because hackers sometimes use a lot of tricks and different types of strings different patterns to create weird emails sometimes regular expressions cannot resolve it but yeah just to let you know that there are different ways in which regular expressions can be done for email because email as you can see is a little complex compared to other different validations so yeah that's it for this video guys i'm going to wrap it up over here i hope you got a good idea about regular expressions especially the email validation let me know in the comments how this video was do like it do share it with your friends and see you guys in the next video peace Thank you.